Welcome to the New Grounds Podcast. Today's episode hosted by Real Faction and Psycho Goldfish. Welcome to the New Grounds Podcast. I'm your host, Cycle Goldfish. Hosting along with me is your boy, Real Faction. We got a really hey. special show for you today. We have the uh, creators of the most popular cartoon that's currently on the giant <laughs> banner of New Grounds today. Uh, S- <laughs> Satina. Satina, <laughs> yay! Satina, why don't you guys uh, introduce, introduce yourselves. Uh, Hannah, you're Stop the creator, so you gotta go first. <laughs> Hi, I'm Hannah. I'm an animator and a comic artist, and I conceptualize Satina. Satina's my baby. Aw. Yeah. An adorable uh, one at that. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, uh, Shaggy, uh, would you like to introduce yourself, my, my dear friend and yeah. colleague? Hello, I am Shaggy. I am Hannah's beautiful African child. Uh, I am the producer <laughs> and uh, video ed- like I edited the whole thing, and I also uh, co-wrote the first episode with Hannah. So if yeah. you hate, if you think the first episode is way worse than Glass of Water, that's because that's my fault. I'm to blame. It's all that's his fault. All on me. If if you don't uh, laugh at a joke, I can tell you exactly which joke that uh, he wrote, and I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, that was Shaggy's fault. Anything, if you didn't find anything funny. That's because I wrote it and not Hannah. She wrote it in every single way, and I'm yeah. paid to say that. Thank you. Thank you, Shaggy. We call that and the then... Shaggy chat list. <laughs> <laughs> I'm contractually obligated to agree with Hans. That is what we call it. <laughs> speaking, speaking of Hans von Harken, the handsome man who is the voice of Dave, why don't you introduce yourself, bro? Well, I'm Hans von Harken. I've been using uh, Newgrounds since like uh, 2001, but I made an account in 2004, so I go way, way back. And um, I just, I was, I auditioned for the uh, role of Dave and Satina through Shaggy, because uh, we worked on another project together before this. Um, and uh, that's how I met Hannah. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, that answers one of my that. questions. If that's the only question I had. Show's over. All right. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> that's a wrap. No. Why don't you guys tell us a little bit about how um, the whole project for Satina went from being, you know, your, your college project to what it is now. Right. Okay. So um, my story with Satina is that I go to this little uh, art college in, in Massachusetts, and I... Uh, I am an animation major there, so I took an animation. I took a character animation class, and I had to uh, come up with a character that I would use to animate with uh, with all my projects. Like I would, I would use to practice walk cycles and and bounce cycles and stuff like that. Um, so I just started doodling, and I, and I came up with this little demon character. Um, I wanted to create a character that would be easy and fun to animate. So uh, Satina came about. She was originally called uh, Banshee, and then I realized, like, oh yeah, Banshees are like an Irish myth and people are going to shit on me for that, for not looking like a banshee. Um, <laughs> so it's just like, uh, yeah. So um, I, I came up with the Satina because uh, it's, it's girl Satan. Um, it's very funny. I'm glad you changed the name because we all know how aggressive those Irish people can get, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, I didn't hey, I to... resemble that remark. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want them to like assume, Assemble a a, a drunken a band. squad. Uh, Throw potatoes mm-hmm. at your head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're not they're not that organized. You didn't have anything to worry about. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. <laughs> I don't know. The Irish can get pretty dangerous when they get organized. I think historically that's a that's a true fact. Nah, yeah. nah. I didn't read about that, so it didn't happen. Do you know okay. what they call an Irish organization though? A fit. <laughs> a fit. That yeah. Just, so I, I, I didn't want them to throw a fit. Um. So yeah, I just. I felt I just, like a like, party. Drawing her more, and I was just kind of cute. Like, what if what's what's her story? Um, so I was just like, what if what if her mom was like the queen of hell, and her dad was like a normal human man? And I was like, oh, that's that's a cute idea. That's fun. I could very like Zeus like, right? Like, didn't Zeus just come down from Olympus and like bang like human chicks all the time? Yeah, yeah, and he caused problems for the world. world, Like after that, like. Funny thing though is like so, Zeus always went for like you know the beautiful women. Where uh, was it? Lucia is that her name? Yeah, Lucia. Lucia went for an IT specialist. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> that's comedy gold. Come on, guy, um, who's not very attractive, but you know. <laughs> 
Hey. Also, I don't want to... <laughs> <laughs> it, it is really ironic that this guy who's supposed to be like a loser and not attractive is like played by the sexiest man in Newgrounds history. It's true. Han Stop it. Himself. That's how good of an actor he is. He, he, is <laughs> really, he can fit into any role. I think the animators did that. Yeah. <laughs> not me. That's, that's what they call in the biz animation magic. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm fine if I, I tell them the next bit of the Satina creation arc. Yes, you can. Go ahead, Chaggy, uh, and your friends. So, so Hannah, she came up with this sort of stuff for her, and she was working on her, her little short at school, which was that Satina wants a glass of water. And even before she had done that, she had posted a little picture of Dave and Satina, and I believe Dave was wearing a shirt saying, I fucked the demon queen of hell, and all I got was this bastard child. Mm. And I think Satina was just wearing a shirt that said, I love my dad. I always told, yeah. Satina, I always, I always told <laughs> Hannah that it would have been funny if her shirt had said, I can't read. <laughs> but, <you> know, <laughs> it, and, that, and that started our long relationship of her not listening to my ideas it's true um, <laughs> but, that got on uh, the shaggy chat list someone, shaggy chat. someone someone posted that image on 4chan uh, on Co and one of the guy the, the guy who I'm partners with Arnold who is like the who was at the time the other half of scum house we were trying mm -hmm. to get ourselves off the ground with like, so we have a few IPs that we're working on but uh he saw this and was like, uh, Shaggy, you need to check this out. I think this is going to be big. We should definitely contact her before someone else does. Um, <laughs> or, or just that one image, because we saw the kind of response it was already getting on Twitter and on Co. And we were like, shit, okay, so let's, let's message her and pretend that we're like way more like competent than what we are. And we tricked her and um, we managed <laughs> and to keep And then they started her harvesting alive. me for my money. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. we managed to keep that dream alive. And then um, she posted her final student project on YouTube and we're like, sweet, we hope this gets like a few thousand views. Yeah, I didn't expect it to get anything because I thought at, the point, at that time, uh, my channel was just a dumping ground for my, my schoolwork. So I put my mm -hmm. animation the file portfolio, of course, animation so file uh, my, my final of this like uh, little cartoon version of me walking around my desk and it was really bad and I didn't know how to like composite it on the video so it was just like, the, the camera was just moving around all the just, because my school doesn't teach me anything you, you can cut that out <laughs> but, uh, and I, I just like made it public it's like oh no, nobody's gonna see this I'm just gonna put it on my portfolio website and have a link to me um, Oops. <laughs> and it exploded <laughs> yeah and it then exploded. Satina was like we, we were uh, watching the, the, the view count um, because I, I was in contact with these guys and I, I just like I was just like, oh, these these guys, they have a student school. They, they, they seem to realize it into a bigger thing. So I, I stuck around with them. We made a group chat. Um, we were just starting to be friends. It was the start of a beautiful relationship. Um, and we were all watching the, the view count rise. And I was just like, oh, wow, it has 100,000 views. Oh, wow, it has uh, 500,000 views. And then one day I got a million views. And we were all shocked. We just... We couldn't and the rest is it. history. Yeah, the rest <laughs> is history. <laughs> <laughs> no, that yeah, that's um, it's it. it how, do you know how long the time span was? Like the range of how oh, it got man. to the million, or because uh, this one got two million in two days, basically. It got two million in in four days, and that's insane. Like no video I've ever made has gotten. You're that talking about glass impression. of water. I'm talking about uh, Satan. Satan. No, 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 the, the episode one uh, got four two million yeah. in two, four days. Sorry, uh, and. But but glass of water, I think it took a little bit longer for it to get a million. We views. got seventy thousand views in one week, and that was yeah. we were like losing our shit. We were like, holy yeah. shit! Yeah. Oh my god, As look at this! Would. This is a <laughs> this is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't I didn't think it would go much beyond that, but it it, it did. For some reason, people really like this concept and they want to see more, so we want to make more for them. It well, does have a, a burning question, yeah, and has a burning question like, "How did this yeah. happen?" You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone, like, I think fifty percent, sixty percent of the comments are just like, "How did Dave and Lucia fuck?" And I'm like, "I don't want to reveal that yet. You gotta keep watching." Yeah. Yeah. We we have had, we have had conversations about this, and we yeah. have spoken deliberately on how we're going to reveal this, and if we're even on, because we actually think it's quite funny that if we just never mention it, it's just. <laughs> They have. They yeah. had an unwanted kid, and now they're dealing with it. Yeah, that's kind of what I love about the concept. It's just it happened, and it's and everybody accepts it as normal. Like that's yeah. what I love about it. So that's I don't think you should ever reveal it. it. It's not. It's not how, about how they met. It's about the the aftermath of it. And, and Anna, mm -hmm. should, we, should we tell them about the deal that we've made with our fans? Uh, you can tell them because I, I. It's slipping my mind. <laughs> okay, so we have we have publicly stated before. That if there is like a group oh, crowdfund yeah. effort or if someone who just is an absolute mad lad gives us fifty thousand dollars, 
we will in graphic detail animate the three minute conception. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was thirty minutes. You keep you keep no, changing three, the time. It's three minutes. It's three, three minutes. Because it's funny if it's three minutes. Yeah. All right, I mean, podcast no listeners, we're gonna have to start a Kickstarter and get this money raised. <laughs> have you, have you made that yet? That's the question. Oh my god! A month. <laughs> if you pay me fifty thousand dollars, you can erase half of my student debt. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yikes, Thinking of the student wouldn't... side, I gotta know what was your grade on uh, say Tina has a glass of water. Oh, I got a hundred. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah. Out of what? I got an A plus. Only a hundred. Only a hundred out of. I would not even extra credit for the views. Dude, you got you got six million <laughs> views and enough money on Patreon to find a pilot episode. Yeah. Honestly, an animation college should have just been like, you know what? You're good. Here's your fucking diploma that degree. You're a professor now. Cool. Yeah, you <laughs> made it. You made it. What yeah, else I'm can we teach you? You have all. You, know, the, you have all the cred. Why you know, don't you teach the class? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I I had like six of my questions answered, so that's awesome. I yeah. don't have to ask them anymore. Cool. Uh, but I did. Uh, speaking of the things that we've been talking about with uh, views and pilots, uh, I wanted to ask, mm. what's it like to make an indie animated pilot that's had this big following? With like you said, it's got like uh, almost two million views now. At, sure. You know, at the ter- uh, and and lots of Patreon supporters backing mm. this, like so raking in that dough for one. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what is the process of making a pilot for an animated show as an indie studio? You know, Scum House Studios. Oh man. Yeah, so we're just a little baby studio, and this is our first big project. Um, so the process is a little bit convoluted, uh, or at least it was at first. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, do you want to talk about that, Shaggy? <laughs> do you um, want to talk about how frustrated you are the, throughout the entire process? I wasn't frustrated. I was more, <laughs> just, more just, I was very worried because we had a lot, because the more people you bring on, the more you, like, if something just goes wrong, if you're doing a little project on your own and the things cock up and you lose motivation, you're the only one who's really affected by it. But there was moments where uh, things got bottlenecked, like we couldn't move on to the next process because we're still waiting for other stuff. Or like, because I mean, Hannah and Arnold ordered the entire thing themselves. Yeah. And we could start, and there there were um, two key animators. We had additional animators who did fantastic work for us and a few supplementary animators, but the lion's share of the animation in the episode was either done by or cleaned up by Hannah and Arnold. Mm -hmm. And... Wow. Um, what's amazing is that even though we had the Patreon support, we had this money, like we weren't, it, it was just very, because every time we spent a dollar, it was like, is this absolutely necessary? Like, I, I, Hane and I didn't see a cent for the entire, we haven't actually, um, like it all went into, we were always worried that we wouldn't have enough to like get the next milestone completed. And luckily, but our streams and our Patreon just kept coming through like clutch for us, dude. Like we'd check yeah. the budget and be like, oh God, okay, we, like we just got lucky most of the time, have just having just enough to get by, yeah. and also it's like, we had oh, a lot the of Patreon wow. money came in. We're good for another month. That's We're good for like another that. month. Like what yeah. was the biggest surprise was the 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 because do- we did YouTube streams and we got donations, and we were blown away by the support. Originally, we just did the streams because there were Patreon rewards. Like, hey, we'll do a stream, and you guys can watch us talk shit or doodle or whatever. And then yeah. people kept asking, like, hey, we want to donate, turn donations on. And we thought, and we were like. We had like 60 people in our chat, so we were like, okay, we like, I'm not ninja, I'm not playing, I'm not doing 360s in the, like in Fortnite or whatever. Why the hell? Would you yeah. We're not as cool as ninja, but um, we did yeah. get, a, we did get a lot of donators, and mm-hmm. a lot of That's people awesome. donated a generous amount. amount. Of, like one time donators, yeah, but then YouTube yeah. holds onto your money for months. Yeah, it does. Know about. Oh, so, yeah. How YouTube works is I, that uh, you you have to set up an AdSense account, and it just kind of like YouTube. if you don't make a hundred dollars a month, that the cutoff is a hundred dollars. Um, it just kind of sits there until until the cutoff is made. So I I had to yeah. wait a long time for the donations to come in, but they no, they did eventually. Screw that. So, yeah, <laughs> that's I, kind uh, of a no. weird process. I kind of have a question actually, because Shaggy, you brought up the point where uh, you said like the more moving part, like the more people you involve, the more I think like it's comparable to like the more moving parts a machine has, the more likely it can jam. Yeah. Right. I mean, was there any kind of moment where you were like, okay, this is too much. You got to reel back on roles on this aspect. Like, what aspect did you notice was where you needed like less cooks in the kitchen, so to speak? (laughs) Jesus, our one voice actor was such a goddamn fucking diva. Jesus Christ. Was Was that the Hans guy? Just dealing with this shit day in, day out. Got to get him the right color skittles. Fucking threw a fit because we didn't get him the right goddamn microphone. (laughs) What the fuck is a green Yeti? Everyone knows it's a blue Yeti. But we couldn't explain this to him. And I had to go on Amazon and show him that a green Yeti didn't exist. 
I remember we had a lot of battles about how buff Dave should look. You know, how in buff the Dave should look. <laughs> Christ, <give laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, like I get the dad bod thing, but can you make the dad bod kind of like hotter? You know, make more tone, yeah. more more biceps, more, more bulge in the pants. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, little, little. Uh, that's when we had talks about that. Uh, otherwise, I'm for real, one of the one of the issues that we did run into was, um, what's funny is that it was even when we did have the money, those rare moments where like, sweet, I think we're fine. Is just because you have the money doesn't mean you have like a good way to spend it. Like just finding the right people. Like yeah. it took mm. us ages to find the voice actor for Lucia and Satina because we really didn't want Hannah to continue voicing both the characters like she did yeah. in the short. We wanted to try yeah. and get actual VAs. And look, I know mm-hmm. a lot of people have said, oh, we like the, we preferred the, the original VAs, but you know, uh, the we, thing we is, wanted, I'm not a voice wanted, actor. I, I want, don't yeah. do this professionally. And I just, I just did those voices to get a grade on my short. I would have like, I would have um, involved other people if I had time, the time or money. Yeah. Like I the circumstances. Just, yeah. Um, so I just you, ended up yeah. voicing them with my shitty God awful voice and people liked it for some reason. But like, there's a lot of people that are still coming. <laughs> like, OCTM. For example, we we couldn't we couldn't find a voice actor for an old man to play Dave's boss. Like we yeah. couldn't find anyone. And yeah. then the one day I was like, "Hey, honey, have you seen this meme of this old dude trying to scam kids out of money?" <laughs> it's like a Fortnite credit card scam. It's one of the fight. <laughs> Apparently, you can pay him money to say lines. So we yeah. looked him up, <laughs> put our request in on his website. He was like, "Yeah, okay, cool. We don't mind you doing video like a, a video thing." And then like we we messaged him and then. You know, like it was a great back and forth. He was like fucking super professional about the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, he was very nice too. He even he got a throat infection right before he was going to do our job. So it took us two weeks to get our stuff. And yeah. then he even sent us, he was like, I did two takes of each line just to make up for the weight. So he was like a proper fucking legend. Yeah. Okay. I think wow. I've heard of this guy. I think awesome. a couple people in the comments have mentioned him. Just yeah. a few. Oh, God. Uh, his uh, name voice is over Pete. Peter? Name is, or... Yeah. Voice, voice over, over Pete. Pete. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he is an incre- He's got a golden voice, a golden radio he does. voice. He does. And I really hope we get the chance to have the boss show up in future episodes. So we can- if yeah. I'm gonna be honest, like when I first heard the voiceover, like when you were showing me the work in progress of the scenes and stuff, and I heard voiceover Pete, I remember feeling like this guy's voice is so strange. Like it's perfect, but like the the performance is so kind of like robotically detached, but it works so well with this kind of like yeah, like callous, kind of like borderline character. sociopath boss. You know, like yeah. who doesn't give a shit. <laughs> And we, then I, I didn't know about voiceover Pete until the comments until I was reading. I was like, "Who the hell is this voiceover Pete guy?" And I found out, yeah, it's like it's like he's one of those like it's he's more of like like he's like this speaker, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The funny thing is, um, I I just realized this uh, a few days a few days ago, um, when somebody posted a screenshot of uh, our cartoon next to voiceover Pete, and they're like, "Oh my god, it's voiceover Pete!" I was like, "Yeah, that's him." And I was like, "Wait a minute, the voiceover Pete looks a lot like." Uh, how I designed the boss, and I, I don't think I did that intentionally. <laughs> you didn't even know <laughs> no, what, that's I amazing. Remember, I, no, no, hold on. I got to tell you this funny story. So I was the one who was like, uh, I, 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 con- I reached out to people to get them to work on the thing because Hannah's a timid little baby who gets face fright. <laughs> so I always had to, I always had to reach out to people to get them. No, to work you're the on producer, you jerk. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know, but anyway, so it's my job. So I reached out to Pete, and then uh, just as we're having the back and forth, Hannah had finished designing the boss. So I thought it'd be fun to send it to him so you can see it. So I sent it to him. I was like, hey, we just finished designing your boss. And all I got back in the email was, is this supposed to look like me? And I had no idea what the <laughs> fuck that was supposed to mean. And Anna and I honestly had like a proper panic attack. Yeah, we were like, we, we were like arguing <laughs> we are, back and forth. Like, is he, he, maybe he didn't he mean it like this. Like, is he offended? Yeah. Is he is he mad at us? Like, <laughs> does he never want to work with I us think he was mainly he... basically asking for permission. Like, can I post this on Facebook and be like, look, I'm a cartoon now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, are, I, we, we, you... we haven't... We haven't heard back from him, so we don't yeah. know if he's even seen the cartoon, but we'd love to know what he thought of it. And yeah, what's I think amazing, you emailed him a few days ago. There is a line when he's yelling at Dave where he goes, Dave, I don't know what in the H-E double hockey sticks you just did. The original line was, what in the hell have you just did? And we didn't know that he doesn't do curse words at all. Like, even hell. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was, he, he, just, he, just, he just improvised that. He, he just did. improvised into H-E double, and we thought that was so fucking funny. That... That we're like, so perfect. We just obviously we kept it in because we thought it was amazing, <laughs> and it's because he doesn't swear. He will not swear. Is he Mormon or something? Because I know a lot of Mormons no, no, don't no. swear. I think, I think it's just. I think he's just a good like, Christian a man. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. That's so amazing. Well, That's so <laughs> because a lot of the tune seems child friendly. So I don't know. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah but we have that. We are big fans of The Office, Hannah and I. Yes. And we really huh? love, love the that, occasional. Though. The occasional bleeped swear word we find yeah. incredibly funny, which is why we have one in our. Because that was an outtake that Brock did. Who's yeah, the voice Brock of Hobo Baker, Rub? Uh, yeah, Hobo uh, Rub. Yeah, the Hobo uh, Rub. 
we had this line and it, it and you know how it sounds like he's walking away when he says i fucking love beer that's because mm-hmm. he was actually walking away from his mic when he said that that's what the audio <laughs> oh. sounded like to us <laughs> oh i was wondering if that was a so, i was wondering so if that was a sound mixing it. thing no, it, it was. was, so, no, it was I, think, I think I think Kennedy, our sound guy, Kennedy Phillips, <laughs> amazing sound guy, Megas yes. Serling. Uh, check out Megas Eldar. He he does a thing on Newgrounds. Check it out. He did but, an uh, amazing he, job. He, of the sound. Did the, he did the sound for us in Hasbun Hotel. Um, but he he did a little studio, oh, wow. a little studio mixing on the like I fucking love beer. But that's how it sounded to us, and we thought that's such a funny fucking gag. He's walking, <laughs> it's off camera now. And he's walking away, and you just hear him in the distance go, I fucking love beer. <laughs> he he even like foleyed them. a lot of this stuff, right? Like he actually yeah. like was like foleyed, like as in like acted out with props and stuff, all the little sound effects and shit. That's what he was yeah. telling. Me. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah the, no, he, he did went all the way. Really that guy's a pro. Yeah, Tana, do you wanna? Um, oh shit, I forgot what I was gonna say. Never mind. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to talk about like how how great uh, Brock's lines were because he just like he kind of took the the three lines I gave him or like I think it was just the one line like it was one line originally. I love your shirt. I fucking love. No, he, he was like beer for the win. That was that was the line, and he was just like <laughs> kind of taking it and, and going all all over the place with it. He was just like, Dave, I love your shirt. I fucking love beer and like all this extra stuff that i wanted to put in but you know how they say like you know they say like jim carrey's got a rubber face i feel like brock has like a rubber voice it's (laughs) true yeah yeah you can just like throw it like like, twist and stretch and turn it in any direction you know he's he's a very funny man yeah he's that guy is hilarious we're excited to keep working with him in the future yeah is he gonna is he gonna have uh like a bigger role in the next episode just because of how good he was you think yes he is actually uh, uh, Ro- hobo rob is gonna come back for episode two uh that's the plan yeah that's the plan <laughs> but like in a, in a much can we say this final like he's gonna be he's gonna have a bigger role than he is much, in, but, yeah in a bigger episode, role than yeah. he did in the uh oh he's his, a... his true yeah. form will will fully shine giving away a little too much are... information I yeah. think it's enough of a tease to say that uh, a few of the characters that you met, even the one of ones, will be making appearances again because yeah. we love them so much and we've developed. Awesome. We've got what like, we. Wait a minute. What does that mean for Melvin? Is he still alive? Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. Hashtag see, Melvin still alive. Of, you will see, my friend. Of, okay, ages ago, fucking ages ago, when we're still with storyboards, and Arnold had just drawn this fat otaku nerd who's going to get his soul sucked. Mm. I think we're in a call with Hans, <laughs> and we're like, "Damn, you know what would be cool." If we could get Zach Hadel or Psychic Pebbles uh, to voice Melvin, that'd be dope. And then Hans was like, he's my neighbor, I could ask him. Wait, what? Yeah. I would awesome. freak out because yeah, I knocked I, on his door and I showed yeah. him the animatic. And, uh, and I was like, I mean, you down? And he's like, sure. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, he's, he's really good at right? screaming. He has, he has yeah. a very unique blood curly scream <laughs> yes he does everyone yeah. knows that but we 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 wanted to display it in a cartoon and i'm very glad we did because it was perfect it was yeah. like it was just like a awesome. haha what if this happened haha <laughs> just kidding unless <laughs> just yeah. kidding well, wouldn't, it, wouldn't it fu- be funny if we could get the like most famous scream on youtube to scream for the screams in the episode yeah I love how that guy you know, has such a distinct voice that in the comments there's people go, the moment he grunted and opened yes, his mouth, yes. I knew who it was. Like, that guy has such an iconic <laughs> voice. Like, like, oh, my second pebble's yep. instincts have served me well. I, I heard it, like, the point one second I His saw voice it. is a superpower. <laughs> it is, yeah. Mm-hmm. When we started this, we had no idea that we'd get, like, voiceover Pete and, like, all of these names working on our... Like, I mean, can, Hannah, we can say it now. Layla, who is the voice of Lucia... She yeah. did some voice work for fucking JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I remember losing yeah, my mind what? over this. Yeah. I was like, okay, but it was like, I think it was like one of the enemy. I have never watched it, but it's one of. The, but my one friend Cooper, who was did some uh, did a lot of backgrounds for Satina, uh, Professor Clockwork, also on mm. New Grounds. But he, uh, I remember saying to him, "Hey, dude, you're not going to believe this because you love JoJo, right? We the, the voice actress for Lucia did voice work on JoJo, and he just goes to me and he says." Uh, I don't like the fucking dub. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch, dude! The Damn. Weeb. Oh, so God. what does that say when she hear, when she's here? Here's this episode. What's gonna happen then? The nerve of this oh. weeb! I'm not gonna work on this show anymore. 
<laughs> now, hopefully so that weed gets his soul Layla. sucked out. Layla was the most. She was no <laughs> offense, Hans, but she was like the most professional aspect of this entire fucking production. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like literally, like every first take, we listened to it and we we're like, "Holy crap, this is it!" Like we were yeah. so impressed with just how goddamn professional she was, and we can't. We wait knocked out the it. recording in like I mean, like, thirty I- minutes. I had yeah. kind of a lack of oxygen in my situation. Well, the- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, you were recording so, in the fucking closet. Yeah, I was recording I, in my old day. apartment. In my old apartment, I was rooming with uh, my friend, and uh, he had turned his closet into a like a recording booth. But it was just literally like this very skinny closet, and uh, it was May last year in LA, and it was really hot. And to get the best sound quality, we would have to close windows, turn off air conditioner, and all that stuff. And I remember since there's a lot of panicky screams, I was like, <laughs> just taking in a lot of the oxygen in the room and I'd just be running out. And I remember like so many times, like in between takes, I'd be like, okay, oh, give me one more. And I'd be like, one second. <gasps> like having to open the door and take a breath. And Wait, I'd be this- like, Carlos, give me another Red Bull. <laughs> you, know? you, guys, you, guys, you guys see what I mean now when I'm saying like fucking diva over here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Get me my just sweat get towel in the wedge. closet and say the lines. Yeah. <laughs> Get in your and suffocate if and you have this. to. <laughs> oh, but it God. actually added to the role, like it added like the, like the the panic, you know. Because oh, that's what sure. I like. That's what I liked about Dave is uh, he reminds me of those characters like um, Jim Carrey and Liar Liar, or like a Chris Farley movie, yes. or like just or like Hal. Yeah, like yeah, Hal and Malcolm nervous. in the Middle, like uh, yeah. Brian Cranston's, like kind of just like someone like I on the edge, that. like trying like the tension of trying to deal with his like shenanigans and stuff. Like I love yeah. that. Like yeah. That's 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 my shit, man. I love that kind of thing, and that's why yeah, I really, I really wanted the... to portray that in his character when I when I created him. And you you just that's brought awesome. him to life completely. And I'm I'm super happy with the with the voice work he did. So when you were looking for an actor for Dave, were you explicitly looking for a guy who only had like a heated closet to work in? Then yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Constant <laughs> Joshua, because how we found uh, Hans was Hans and I. Uh, he put, he he did his famous mutton chops short film yeah uh, and he actually hired he commissioned me and uh professor clockwork to design and 3d model a big rusty ass robot for the background of one of his shots sure like the post apocalyptic nature and we did that and we became good friends with Hans. when you as a voice actor and we actually hired him for another show that we're working on uh, that's, oh. uh to be announced mm-hmm. uh, little, it's like a it's like an a, absolutely beautiful show <laughs> yeah uh <laughs> Working with a dude named Fart, um, <laughs> who is Boy, an fart? unhinged fart. Yeah, like a like, <laughs> like it comes out un- of your ass. Unhinged, That's the same unhinged fucking legend with the crazy. Yeah. Like, this cartoon's gonna be. It make everything about it makes me laugh. I'm so excited to continue because we were working on it before we met Hannah, and then that kind of went on the oh. back burner when we saw when like Satina took off. But we want to slowly start bringing that back because I mean, there's there's cool. quite a few shows that we've got. Guys, I mean, in the in the Scumhouse um, Twitter uh, profile, you could see kind of this banner of different characters you guys have been working on, like the hot, yeah. the hot salsa guys, the Satina characters, like right, mm-hmm. a dust yeah, bullet or whatever, dust ballet, yeah, or ballet. Uh, what did I say, bullet? <laughs> Close enough. But uh, yeah, we got a few things cooking. But uh, Hans, we actually Hans was originally the voice on those kind of shows. And we already had a working relationship with him. And then when Hannah was looking for a guy with Dave, I was like, I showed him mutton chops, and uh, I was like, Yeah, what about the what about the dude in the top hat who's beating up the the small Mexican boy? Um, <laughs> like, it's, it's that's that's basically the synopsis of the show. <laughs> wow! Wow! Oh man! But yeah, and so I'm just glad that like Hannah liked the performance and like, cause to me, um, I'm an animator as well. And like finding the voice for a character that I created is like really important. And so to me, it just, it just always as a voice actor for somebody else's work, it just feels great to like want to hear that the, that you like really felt mm-hmm. like it brought it to life. Cause yeah. that's my, my number one goal. My second number, number one goal is, uh, to make sure that people don't mind the voice change from the previous episodes. Cause you, like we yeah. were saying earlier, some people yeah, get yeah. attached, you know, yeah. and I just hope yeah. that it transcended that. And it seems like, seems like people are cool with it. So I think out of all the voice changes, because I got another guy to, to voice Dave in, in the, in the original short. So out of all the voice changes, I think people complained about yours the least. So take uh do with the that least. information what you will <laughs> yeah <laughs> they still complained but it was the least i'm gonna be honest i don't think i've seen a single that's just like um 
like people people for some reason want Lucia the like American Queen of Hell to sound like a 22 year old girl yeah. instead of the incredibly ferocious and powerful woman that we replaced her with um, <laughs> yeah. they, really they also they also don't want Satina to sound like a hyper little girl they want her to sound like the exact same 22 year old girl voicing the mother demon I, I'm very <laughs> with, with, a, with a fake yeah. high pitch voice it yeah, with, just the, with, the, add up. with the pitched up voice. Yeah. In audacity. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't voice it. I didn't pitch it up enough. Actually, I think I did. I don't know. I'm I'm very I was very mm-hmm. stupid with the sound design in that mm-hmm. short. Didn't know. Uh, did didn't you just oh, did you just like put your ha- hand around your throat and like squeak it? Mommy, can I have a glass of those? <laughs> for those who don't like the voice change, at least what we can promise you is that we're gonna try harder with the direction with the voice actors in future to try and get them a yeah. little like, you know. Keep, we want to. Our goal is to always try and be better. Obviously, I think that's what you should always do. But I mean, we really do want to try and improve with our next, with mm-hmm. our next foray into the Satinaverse. Yeah, people don't know wanna... that we're just a little baby studio because we've already this kind of how... established ourselves in the public space, and they're just like, "Oh, when they do this better, this this could have been better." Like, no, we'll we'll get there. We're trying. This is our. Because you're I think, so good now, I think, they think you're good bigger than for... you are. Is what it is. Yeah. Wait until it's... it's the thirty fourth season of Satina. Yeah, and we've completely sold out, and we're doing everything in Toon Boom, and everything's cut out, and we've got it's a huge library of posters. Season. Yeah, yeah. Tina's all grown up. Yeah. Then, then you can kind of tell us when we jump the shark. But please give us more <laughs> of a chance than the first episode that we've yeah. ever made of anything. The first episode and a pilot that I made on my like entirely on my own. That, that... <laughs> that, <laughs> that's, that's incredible. Is the one she made on her own. Yeah. 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 I guess mm-hmm. that's fair. <laughs> Where is this going? Where do you guys plan to go with this? Like, the, as far as like Scum House, Satina pitching, all that. Like, where is that going? Um, so a lot of people on Twitter are like, they they they're making comments like, oh, I hope this this gets on Netflix. I hope this this is a show and and this becomes a real comments, show. Yeah, those <laughs> those comments always confuse and kind of perturb me because it's like, oh, with this we have made it. It it did get picked up. It's why we're we're making it ourselves. And it is a show, <laughs> and mm-hmm. you can watch it. Like people don't, people think that you like only real shows get on get on TV, and the, like web series don't exist, but but they do. And and we're making it with uh, love and care and our own direction, like more more creative freedom than we would have had uh, if we'd pitched it to a studio. And I think that's what I want to keep it as for now. Obviously, there... if Netflix offers us like money bags to to make it into a show, we will <laughs> I'll sell, we'll sell out. <laughs> Yeah, we'll sell it on Harpy, but... There is um, a weird sort of cultural seal of approval when, like, you get on TV, right? Like, yeah, one thing I will say yeah. is, like, you guys watch the Smiling Friends premiere, right? We on love Smiling Swim? Friends, yes, we Isn't did. It, there's, there's something weird about seeing the Adult Swim watermark in the corner and the TV <laughs> mature. Yeah, like, something yeah. about that did make it feel like, whoa, this is, like real quote unquote as a, as, yeah. the, as the comments would say <laughs> like but and all it is is a little stamp you know it's not it's nothing it's not like a big deal like this is a real yeah. show so tina is a real yeah. show like you just watched an episode but all, it, there all is this weird they're just, they're just less accessible than than web series <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, like, so, yeah. I, I couldn't find a way to to watch Smiling Friends on my TV because I did not have cable, and a lot of people I know also. Uh, don't. That's what's funny, and like I can watch Satina on TV, but I can't. I yeah. couldn't watch Smiling Friends because like on Satina, yeah. you just put you just go to your YouTube app on your console that's, or your whatever. That's what really yeah. got me about Smiling or Friends. Is I watched it. Up. We watched it live. We had a little viewing party, and we watched it live. Okay. Yeah. And when it was over, I was like, "Okay, I want to watch it again, please." Adult Swim, can you just play? Can you please? Oh no, you're playing the next program. Oh, okay. Let me yeah. try and find a rip of it online now, so I can watch yeah. it again and look at I all feel, the little. I feel dirty doing that. Animation. Yeah. I feel like I feel I'm like animation. I'm, I'm glad animation is slowly moving off of uh like like TV and moving more into like streaming and that sort of thing because yeah. I love I love going like frame by frame through animation and looking at stuff, rewatching the same little joke over and over again. Mm-hmm. Dude, that's that's something that get made me like. I remember you were telling me, like, I can't believe all the background jokes people are catching that you guys snuck in there, <laughs> you know? And it's because I guess they could pause and play and, you know, that it's like yeah. you do add another dimension to it when you can, like, control the timeline versus TV, right? Oh, God. As, a view, as a viewer. Well, that people were picking up on all the little, like, the stupid little references, like the Evangelion <laughs> theme in the elevator. Yeah. I genuinely didn't <laughs> think anyone was going to get that. I was like, okay, well... I think it's funny because of that like one and a half minute still image that they put in Eva when they're just sitting in an elevator. Yeah. Um. Yeah, there, there are a bunch of little things that we put in there that were that like made us laugh. Like they weren't at the forefront, but they were in the background. So like if people didn't find them funny, they, at least they weren't in the spotlight, you know? Easter egg. Yeah. Was yeah. <laughs> we just uh, threw in like, the- references. Like I, 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 I put in some like references to other shows and, and the, the sticky notes on Dave's calendar. Um, I put like little... Nice. Um, oh yeah, there's little, this like... 
I noticed that there's this solitary addiction arc kind of building here. Yeah, yeah. So, like, it's a recurring theme that Dave is just so boring that the only thing he's got going for him is just playing solitaire. Uh, he's just... That's what he does. He, he goes mm-hmm. home, he plays solitaire. He's you at know, work, he plays solitaire. A lot of people just... did that and Minesweeper at their office desk back in the 90s. Uh, oh, yeah. I remember. My mom yeah. told me stories. <laughs> I was working, working in offices back then. <laughs> Shut up. Okay. <laughs> It was many, it wasn't many that years long ago. ago. Hannah, it wasn't that long ago. The 90s weren't that long ago. Okay, Dude, it was up 50 now. years 30 ago. Years. Right? You're being very impolite. years now, buddy. Dude, you're like 57. You gotta, you gotta stop pretending you're younger than you are. You gotta stop wearing hoodies and backwards Hannah, hats. Hannah, you are, you are a shivering fetus. I can see through you almost. Just <laughs> 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 in the hands. Listen, just because I haven't been conceived yet doesn't mean you can make fun of me like this. All right? So fucking small. <laughs> Old man. <laughs> oh. Check out this boomer over here, guys. I'm Look at this! See, I'm not the only one that gets running this. around. <laughs> running around with your backwards hat, sitting on chairs backwards. Why is everything backwards? Can run. At least I have use of my legs. I don't have arthritis, and they're not like. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna run. I'm gonna run you over with my motorized scooter. <laughs> very, very slowly. Oh, very slowly. I got run over by a lady in a motorized cart. Enjoy the colors <laughs> as they go by of my varicose veins. Yeah. <laughs> that, by the way, that was a Dumb and Dumber reference, by the way. Oh, I, <laughs> I caught it. <laughs> we get it. We have fun here. Anna, what, Anna, what yeah. was the most difficult part about making a pilot, an animated pilot? Um, let's see. Managing everything, I guess, because I was kind of the the overseer of the project, and I was kind of thrust into the role of showrunner when I was like twenty one, and I wasn't. How easy well. is it? To, how easy is it, Anna, to delegate? Uh, not easy. <laughs> Very hard and scary. That's why I have my big African friend to do that for me. Uh, to intimidate people, and and I can just like sit pretty in the corner and and wait for it all to go over. I get messages <laughs> from Hunter like, "Hey, has so and so sent us those cleanups yet?" And I'm like, "Have you asked them?" And it's like, uh, <laughs> "Can you ask them about those cleanups?" And I'm like, oh, I just like okay. I put my little fingers together and I was like, "Can you ask him, please?" And he's like, mm, fine. <laughs> Rolled his eyes. Or I'd get, I'd, get a, I'd get a message in the middle of the night. Like, because I always, I always have my phone, my Discord is set. To, so I'd wake up in the middle of the night because I am six or seven, depending on that, I said seven hours ahead of Hannah. Yeah. And she'll wake up at like 1 p.m. and work into the night. So it's like, I work ridiculous hours. So <laughs> I'll get a message at like 4 a.m. saying, hey, um, can you please put the shot into the animatic? And then I'll sit down and I'll be like, Hannah... Like, various parts of this aren't colored in properly. And then she'll go, okay, cool, I'll fix it now. And then just go AFK for, like, 45 minutes. And I'm just <laughs> sitting there at my desk, just crusting over. <laughs> you know, we we, uh, we said our voice actor was a little bit of a diva. I think I think we know who the real diva is here. It's me. Yeah, it's you. That's you. I was referring to. No, I think we're gonna, ha- gonna have to have a diva duel, Shaggy. I'm gonna be honest. Though, I'm gonna be honest. So this making this, it, it's been hell, and I've probably developed like s- several fucking s- stomach ulcers making this thing. But it's been, the, it's probably been the most satisfying thing ever. Like putting it up on YouTube, uh, it didn't feel real. Hannah and I, for the for about a, a day afterwards, we were just everyone was going like, wow, and like losing, like everyone who worked with was so excited for us and stuff like that. And Hannah and I were just sitting there like like we'd been shot. <laughs> yeah, I remember like, <laughs> Hannah, Hannah and you both said almost word for word, like, uh, I'm a little overwhelmed right now. I think yeah. I'm gonna Guys, go I think we need some take time a breath. To <laughs> yeah. go, are, are there yeah. pictures of my face on the internet? I think I'm going to take those down now. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like I just got, I felt, I felt that, because I've been, I've been in like a, a horrible car accident before and it felt ex- like physically the, the same sensation. <laughs> <laughs> so brace yourselves everyone out there who's making any cartoon to feel like you just got out of a car accident a horrible You're about car to die. accident. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well no, no it like, is like my... it's like it's like give, it's like giving labor for a year, right? Yeah, it, it was what a was... very overdue baby and we kept yeah. making that metaphor so many times. Yeah. <laughs> I th- I think the moment that it felt real was um a day and a half later when my parents cuz it went online quite late in the evening so my parents weren't able to see it. And I've been, I had to move back in with my parents to work on this because uh, I, you know, like rent and stuff. I wouldn't have to worry about that and whatnot. And I wanted to work on this. So I moved back in with my parents who have been very supportive, but it's supportive in the kind of way that like, gee, I hope this really works out for my son. Um, so I can get him you know, out of here. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Just so that, you know, like, so he can like, you know, because when you're 28 years old, 
and you're living with your parents and you want to be like you want to be a famous uh, animation producer and you're still living with your parents you know there's like you're at that age where you start going like maybe uh maybe uh I should just make like tampon ads or something because maybe a uh, long-form content. <laughs> <laughs> we would make really me. good tampon ads. We'd make the best. Dude, I ads. interned at a studio where we were making tampon ads, and I was like, "Holy shit! Everyone here looks dead in the eyes." <laughs> I don't want to hurt myself. And then when I came back, everyone was like, "Oh, you got to go work at that studio." And I was like, "Uh, yeah." And they were like, "And I was just like, oh god!" I nearly dropped out of film school after my internship because I was like, "Oh my god, this is so far detached from what I imagined it was going to be like." And I'm so yeah. glad that I got to work on something that I was actually excited about. But anyway, going back to my parents, it only really settled <laughs> in when I showed it to them. And they were like, holy shit, this is amazing. We are so proud of you. <laughs> and oh. I haven't heard that since I graduated. So I really needed that. Oh. Um, <laughs> wow. I'm, near, so I'm proud of our little boy. Proud of our little boy. And they were like <laughs> sending it off to their friends and showing me like screen caps of like their friends. Going, like, holy shit, it feels like this should be on TV. Again, it was like, this, this could be a real show. And I was like, it is a real show, but whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, People that's when it, that's when I really sunk in, and then I messaged Hunter, and I was like, "Hey, Hunter, dude," and she was like, "Yes." I was like, "Dude, we we made a cartoon." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We did. We made a cartoon. It's, it's really fucking cool. I, I hate it when people do that because like people don't seem to understand indie content is real content because it's tangible. It exists like anything else. It's just not famous because when yeah. I was a kid, I want to say I was 13 or 14 when I started making music. I, I'm 28 now, so that's half my life. I do music voice acting with the work. But my I, I, re- I remember specifically a night where my friends, uh, three of my you know friends at the time, where we are in my room and I was playing the music. And as soon as I was done, one of them was like, all right, let's listen to some real music. And I'm just like, excuse Oof. me. And and, oh and you, you might understand why I've really stuck to my name, you know, real faction. Real, real. Yeah. You're, you're the real. I the just want to say to you, dude, right now, heart to heart, there's absolutely nothing wrong with being 28. <laughs> don't listen to him. I never said it was. Man, I miss 30. 28. Don't, don't I miss 28 Hunter. so bad. Hans is 30. Yeah. Oh, Hans, that's but there's so definitely old. something wrong with being thirty, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, I was, uh, I was, uh, I was like, what is it? When you go there on Instagram and there's Instagram ads, and I saw an ad for a T-shirt that said um, "Vintage 1989." I'm like, I guess I'm fucking vintage now. <laughs> <laughs> she <laughs> <magic> expired. Hans, <laughs> vintage art. So I guess like th- like you're vintage when you're thirty. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> but I don't mind. I- I've always right? looked forward to getting older. Thirty, 30 it's not bad. Twenty. I'm 42. It's not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. that's great. Okay, that's is, wonderful think, to look forward to. 50 and 40 is where all the existential dread is. But when you hit 40, you get that like that like pure existential dread where like you're like when 30 to 40 is like shit, nothing matters. And then when you're 40 to 50, you're like shit, nothing fucking matters. Yeah, it's like and your then, second <laughs> win. <laughs> yeah. What if you already I, went I through your existential crisis when you were like 60? 40 to. Like, I feel like I got it out of the way. Yeah, I swear, I swear to God, like forty to fifty is like is like your second teenage, like teenage years. No, it yeah. totally is. It totally is. I'm I'm looking forward to that. Me too. <laughs> yeah, you you care about so much less stuff. It's it's so liberating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh shit! There's a global pandemic. I get to stay inside and eat chips. Fuck yeah! I do that anyway, so I can't, yeah. really, I can't really say speak oh. to that. <laughs> Hunter, do you want to tell them just how much this global uh, viral pandemic affected us? Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so um, crazy shit's going on in my school right now. Uh, everyone, it's it's a very small school, uh, so they had to kick everyone out of their their uh, the, of the dorms, um, and that's where a Whoa. lot of people live right now. Like they can't really go anywhere else, so everyone's just complaining. And there's like petitions going up, like "Don't close the school," and then there's other petitions going up, like "Oh, please close the school. We can't focus on our fucking grades and our little art projects while there's all people are dying." And it's just like it's just insane. Wow. And overwhelming. And I keep getting wait. Do you mean to say that people from... are getting divided over 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 like what has now become a political situation? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> crazy that's right really weird i didn't know that that, ha- that happened not not in yeah. america no not no, no. In america. <laughs> no, maybe like in like... france or something you know <laughs> yeah yeah fucking but... french <laughs> fucking french i hate those guys oh man um but yeah that my school is just like in a state of flux right now has so to speak so i've just yeah. kind of abandoned uh caring about my grades right now and just focused all of my attention on satina um and i uh so how did i 
why did I go to New York? Somehow I ended up in New York um, because, yeah. My, <laughs> As I one does. Mass, I'm Massachusetts based, um, and Arnold and Cooper, go to uh, the, other, the other guys on the project, uh, they they came to visit me um, because they live in New York, and uh, cool. we were we were going to spend a lovely little week together. And I would show them around, and I would take them to Boston. I I take them to all the little shops I like. I take them to the beach, and we and we'd hold hands, and we would get. Uh, <laughs> By the waves um but the pandemic happened and everything was closed so we were like shit let's just stay inside uh, and work on our cartoon yeah. <laughs> um, kind of worked so out didn't it lived, for those final finishing touches us, yeah it worked out um so they they stayed in my house for like for like a week um and we were hanging out a little bit we were watching movies we were working on a cartoon um my landlord uh was like hey your friends are here for too long you gotta go and i was like oh shit um, what? <laughs> what do I do now? And uh, Shaggy was uh, was also hanging out with us because we try to include him, even though he cannot be with us physically. Uh, and he I'm in like, Africa now. Because you're in Africa, you live in a third world country. Um, Anna, and people are going to take that the wrong way. It's a joke for us for you to say that, but you can't just keep saying you live in a third world country. <laughs> it's true. Um, <laughs> it's true. Anyway. It's also, totally Africa is not a country. <laughs> it's a third yeah. world continent. Africa is not a. Africa's more of an abstract concept, if you think about it. That's like, whose line is it anyway? That episode with Drew Carey, and he said the exact same thing. <laughs> God, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so Shaggy was like, why don't you, why don't you like, go, go back with them to New York? And I was like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll go with them for a week. I'll hang out there. And I, then I'm they just, quarantined the city. They quarantined <laughs> New, and that's New got York the worst and Massachusetts. Of it. And they, I stayed there for over a month. Um, and I just got wow. back today. <laughs> well, it was supposed to be a cheeky little week-long endeavor to an inch, like a month weekie. and a half. Yeah. Wow. A cheeky little week. <laughs> and she had to travel all the way home and just to get on this podcast. Just to get on this podcast. <laughs> I can't even fucking take a break, kick my shoes off, and play video games. Like 10 keep... minutes before we were on, you were like taking pictures of ducks or something? I like... was, okay, all right. Let me just <laughs> no, no, no. Hold on. You were like, hold where on. the hell is I'm Hannah? Hold I say to Hannah, I say to Hannah, okay, maybe don't go out today because by five, what's it, at four thirty, we need to do a sound check for this podcast. And she's like, no, no, don't worry, I'm just gonna go grocery shopping, I'll be back. Except it's four thirty. I go, Hannah, where are you? Don't get a response for five minutes. Then five minutes later, I get a message. It's a picture of her taking a photo out of her car of some ducks crossing the road. Like I would yeah. give a shit. <laughs> no, no, because ducks were crossing the road. They caused me to be late to this meeting. That um, wasn't why you took the photo. You took the photo because you were like, haha, look at these ducks. Yes. You could have ran over the ducks. There's millions of them. <laughs> they could we fly. The They'll get out of the way. Coop, Coop was like, hey, Arnold, you should get out of the car and scare those ducks so we can keep going. And he didn't do it because he's a coward, but he could have saved us like five minutes. Arnold is scared it's, it's like... that birds are going to fly into his mouth and choke him. <laughs> <laughs> Arnold thinks birds are dying. Arnold has weird really fears. Really he was telling me about some. Yeah. He, Arnold is afraid of dinosaurs uh, because he had a... <laughs> He had a bad experience at a dinosaur museum. <laughs> he fell uh, into a pit, oh, but there was an animatronic dinosaur, <laughs> and he screamed and passed out. He was just, like five years old. <laughs> so is this real? Terrified. This is yeah, real. No, that's, that's, this is not a bit. Uh, Arnold was oh like, my he, God. he got taken to a dinosaur museum, and he like fell into a pit, and he got like almost eaten by an animatronic dinosaur. <laughs> uh, wow. And he was like, every time he sees a frog or a lizard or something, he's like. I don't like that man. I don't. I don't like this. So like Jurassic Park. Like Jurassic guy. Park is too real for him. It's too real. Yeah. I'll be honest. <laughs> I can relate to this because when I was four years old, that's the first time I saw Jurassic Park, and it did scar me for a while. And throughout most of my life, whenever I had nightmares of a, a T Rex chasing me, I would wake up like sweating and panicking. Oh my like, god. Like no joke. Speaking of strange fears in Africa, I, I had a, this. Uh... <laughs> I had this classmate back in middle school in uh, when I, I was living in Spain at the time. I was going to an international school, and there was this like uh, kid in my class, and we were like doing a project, and I was looking for pictures of animals for the project, and uh, I was flipping through like I think it was Google Image Search, and like a big elephant appeared, and he was like, ah, you know, and I was like, what? What's wrong? And he's like, uh, I have a fear of elephants, and I'm like, really? Are you kidding? He's like. No, no, I'm not. And then uh, I was like, who the hell is afraid of elephants? And then he said, like, well, we got our, we were, my family and I were in a car and we got attacked by an elephant and it was like tumbling and rolling in the car for like 50 minutes. Oh, And I'm wow. like, oh, of course, you're from Africa. That's actually like something that, that could be a problem. <laughs> yeah, like, that's okay, real. That's, but, but for, for me, I, 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 you only see them in zoos, but for him, it's like they're around. You they're know? real. They're uh, real. Uh, they're here. There was, what? speaking of, speaking of both elephants and falling into pits, um, my okay. dad, my dad, who has one eye, um, was filming an elephant, and 
it was one of those old VHS cameras where you had to put that little suction cuppy thing on your eye. So yeah. he could only see what he was looking at through the camera because he didn't oh, see it in the oh, eye. No. Wow. And he was walking around and we have this wonderful video from where I have a child of me standing there waving with an elephant behind me. Okay. Mm. And suddenly my dad just falling into a pit. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was like walking around and didn't notice this massive fucking like just hole in the oh ground where he God. just fucking fell and uh, the rest <laughs> of that, that trip, there. the rest <laughs> of the trip to the elephant sanctuary uh, the, the just had no audio because he like broke the microphone in the camera mm. oh no yeah. I thought that was pretty funny that's hilarious <laughs> dude if you could so, find so, that video you should post it I guess you can't ask people like this and the other guy hey uh, you know there's an elephant in the room uh, we're gonna talk about it <laughs> nice. What's funny Just though? Right there. <laughs> What's funny? Was, um, my friend invited me to his uh, game lodge, like house once in Limpopo, and I drove there. And uh, we're we're sitting out on the porch having a beer, and he goes, "Ah, oh, fuck, man, excuse me." And he pulls out a gun, and I was like, "Oh my god, what?" And he just <laughs> fires it into the air, and suddenly I see a like the bushes rumble and a rhino running away from us. <laughs> oh my god! god. <laughs> and he was, I was like, "What the fuck?" And he was like, "Yo, we just have to like." We, we, like we shoot to like frighten them so that they get scared of like gunshot noises and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also he was getting a bit too close to my property and I was like, okay. <laughs> and I was like, and Just what happens if he gets too close to your property? And he was like, dude, this is a handgun. It's going to do fuck all to a rhino. Like we yeah. run inside and hope it leaves. <laughs> <laughs> shoot yeah. it in the horn. I'm glad like, I Hunter, live somewhere the worst animal Hunter, I have to deal with is a raccoon. Hunter, yeah, raccoons, he's... possums. That's what we got here. And maybe maybe Hunter, coyotes. You have the yeah, rhino do the job when you get demolished. Yeah. Hunter, Hunter, Hunter thinks I'm gaslighting her when I tell her, like, yeah, no, I was. Uh, uh, my fr- I went to like my friend's vacation home at the beach, and then the one day we just hear like the kitchen getting destroyed, and we're, we're like, what the fuck's going on? And we thought like, um, we th- we were with this chick who was an absolute bitch. We thought she was just throwing a tantrum in the kitchen. Um, <laughs> we walk into the kitchen and we're like, and we're like, fucking, like, what the fuck? You, wait, what? And there was just a baboon sitting on the counter. <laughs> it, oh, was like, oh. it was That's uh, incredible. It was, like, it was like, oh, fuck, there's a baboon in the house. <laughs> and oh, these, things are, these things are ridiculously strong. So we're just like, you know what? I'm going to open the door and, and violent. The bed. Yeah. Incredibly violent when cornered. Yeah. Yeah. And smart. Yeah. I've seen yeah, videos of baboons me. figuring out how uh, vending machines work in Africa and they'll like pick up change on the street and like get like a bag of chips or something. A cheeky little treat. <laughs> like homeless people. <laughs> <laughs> so they at least have that, awesome. that that IQ. Yeah. We've we've gone so off track in the natural conversation. <laughs> yeah, right. Not, no, but it's fine. I like this. We like to keep it organic and natural. Uh, yeah. but I, I did want to ask a question. Um with sure. the process you've mentioned some things that have gone wrong but just in general um what are some things that you learned from the last experience that uh didn't work out in the process that you would do differently and things that actually worked out and uh, improved the process okay so me personally um i'll go first uh i did not have very good model sheets for the characters uh so i didn't really teach people per se how to draw the characters i was just kind of i just kind of like did i I just kind of said here you go here's a drawing of this character uh now animate this like complex scene of them walking or or emoting or whatever and uh a lot of the stuff i got back was very off model and i had to fix it myself so uh this time Uh. around i'm going to i'm going to be really in depth with it i'm going to like i'm going to tell them exactly how big the lines they should draw for 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 dave's chin will be and uh like how many lines it takes to draw satina and like stuff like that um i just want to make it very clear and concise uh like how how you can draw these characters so that they're on model at all times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is yeah, a very challenging part of animation. Yeah. Getting yeah. everyone to synchronize, you know? Yeah, everything has to be consistent, otherwise it's very noticeable. Um, mm-hmm. I, I notice that a lot in uh, like less experienced indie indie cartoons. Like, oh, this person did this shot and this person did that shot. Like, it in in uh, in an ideal world, it should be all seamless. It should just be like, oh, this is, you know, this is a cartoon that I'm watching. It's kind of like breaks immersion when you can kind of pinpoint yeah but at, at you least want it to flow. I, know, I know some people like like that they like pointing it out but i like to i like to watch a cartoon and just be like huh like you can you can kind of like think that one person made it something like style like that in animation is sort of like the dna of the show 
right? Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. when you start to kind of mix the DNAs, that's I think what you're talking about, like the breaking of immersion. Mm. Um, yeah. It's like visual logic stuff, but to the to the umph degree. Like even in film, you would have that where it's like a director will try to like shoot in the style that the you know that the, the movie or show or whatever is in. Yeah. But they would, like you know shows will have different directors on them, but they try to all kind of harmonize on the cinematography so that it has like the mm -hmm. same identity. Yeah. Um, but that is just exact like everything you see is design and animation so so like that is that is definitely like a, a very it, it's a sensitive challenge process and challenge yeah yeah, yeah. it's mm -hmm. like a, a good a good animation you know a good cleanup artist and a good board, board artist can uh, kind of be a chameleon and, and copy any style with ease and that's that's a quality that a lot of people look for when when they hire people that's what does make it a lot for. easier though if they can if you give them a proper model sheet yeah exactly <laughs> so i think yeah Thanks, Shaggy. Yeah. Thanks for taking the point. No, no, no. Just to bring the point around. I'm about to admit. I'm about to admit live on air all of my flaws and fuck ups on the project. You don't have oh, to worry. Good. Please I'm do. I'll, I'll yeah, just so. I'll just sit quiet and listen. So Shaggy, um, tell us what were your fuck ups? <laughs> okay. No. In what all seriousness, this is this is some keep, genuine keep in mind, advice that I think more. This show has to stay within two hours. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, no, 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 I'll keep it. I'll keep it brief. But this yeah. is, I think, some genuine advice that I just want people who are, especially people who are collaborating. If you're collaborating, you got to understand that it is a lot better for people to be having, like, enjoying the work that they're doing than being efficient. Like, there were times when we were working on this when, uh, say, like, the boards were getting done in a certain way. I would say, look, you don't, please don't do it this way because it's not efficient and stuff like that. And I would, like, berate people to try and be more efficient and do things in a more, you know, economical way. Trying and to get the would trains just, running. Yeah, basically, I would focus on efficiency, <laughs> not realizing how badly it would kill people's motivation. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes it is just okay if you're a producer to just think, okay, this could be get done faster, but uh, at least this way the people working on it aren't going to burn out. Yeah. yeah. Like, if, it's fine if they go into too much detail on their boards because at least by the end of the week, your boards will be done and you won't get like three days of efficient boards and then this person going, I'm so fucking over this. <laughs> yeah, it's almost kind of like you have to almost think of it like a band, right? Like you can't, yeah. Like the the band's got to feel the rhythm, enjoy the you know like the, the chemistry of the band members playing off each other in the music. It's gonna come through in the in the music itself, and the same goes for like a small team of animators, mm. right? Like you, like you maybe have maybe, to, you maybe have giant to, studios have to can make... afford to just give everybody like giant paychecks and and you know health insurance and stuff. But when you're working in small yeah, exactly. teams, exactly. When we the people who are working with us didn't have the cash incentive to just fucking give a shit. So the passion had to, had to actually, be there. Yeah, th we had yeah. to make sure that they were excited to work on it. And if as soon as you push them to try and do it in a like, you know, if as soon as you put a bit too much pressure on them, you kill that magic, and mm -hmm. it became like it became like proper work for them, work that they weren't getting like remarkably compensated for. And at that point, that's when I realized, okay, we either have to make this far more accommodating for the people working for us, or figure out mm -hmm. a way to pay them off because it's not fair on them. That was probably I yeah. think, the, the thing that's I a really good lesson. Most. Yeah. I gotta yeah. say, for someone who's been working in various creative industries for going on two decades plus, uh, for you to come <laughs> to that conclusion as quick as you did, that's that's really impressive to me. I know a lot of guys that have been running things for decades, and they still don't get it. Mm. Thank you. I'm very talented. Well, I still don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> and humble, just like me. Yeah. I like a man. Uh, no, humble. but... But for real, there were there were so many moments in this thing where I was like, "Oh God, I've irreversibly fucked this up." Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, no, it was you reversed it. sailing. Like, it's going to be amazing. Like, we're going to do. Like, I think what what I find most impressive about this isn't so much that we got the product out in a timely fashion, because Hannah and I still look at that and think, "Oh God, we could have fixed so many different areas, like made the timing better." Because that's another thing. Oh my God, the, the, whenever I see people going like, "Oh, the pacing." Like, you know, it could have been better or the writing could have been better. I think like, fuck, dude, you're right. But the thing is, we wrote it and we didn't give it enough time in boarding. So I, I want more passes on boarding next time if we can afford it. Like, there's lots it's of things. It's a that pilot. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's well, that's, yeah, you have to always remember that that's what you, those, these are the kind of things you learn on a pilot. That's why you make a pilot because it's sort of like, um, like, even, even like what you were saying, Hannah, when you were saying like, oh, I should have made model sheets and stuff more specifically. Yeah. It's like um, the whole point of a pilot is you kind of assemble the rhythm and the, the strategies in the first one. And then f in yeah. the future, you, you, you save more time because you, a lot of those big first pushes are already through. Mm -hmm. And so from that point on, it's like it, it, ideally in a good production, like it gets smoother and smoother and smoother, you know? For sure, uh, yeah. Because more and more of these things that you just had to discover are known now. 
yeah we we had so we definitely little... have a lot more insight to uh to how we can make the pipeline way more efficient the next episode and and uh, yeah. it's a good thing we do because like it's it's a good thing we made this because now we yeah that's that's what i wanted to segue into more. is um with all the stuff you've learned what do you guys think the uh turnaround on the next episode is going to look like compared to this first one well um we are hoping to get we are hoping to work on two episodes simultaneously so we can release the next wow. two episodes uh like kind of sooner uh <laughs> you know um so there's less of a wait time for people next time around um i don't know if we can i don't know if we if can you, manage it but we we're that's told, our goal uh, multiple times by different content creators to not promise goals because notoriously yeah. we wanted to release this in august last year oh and that didn't happen <laughs> no <laughs> never no. never give a dead date okay i think we can get this done apparently, in a month apparently, apparently that's yeah. that's something we thought we could get all the animation done in a month that's how stupid we were at the beginning yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, was like, I, I went to new york uh, to visit to visit the boys uh coop and arnold's um and i was gonna go animate with them and this is after we had gotten all the VA done, the script done, and the boards. Um, and I was just like, alright, we'll knock this out in a month, and we'll have it by August. And it was, uh, I think we didn't even <laughs> we didn't even get the first act done, all of it, when, yeah. after I left. So I was just like, no, okay. Um, yeah, I guess we'll Arnold, keep going. Arnold is the, he's the fellow who animated uh, a lot of the very comp, like the, a lot of the really complex stuff. Like, the more um, horror. The, the, the yeah. whole Melvin sequence at the end with the monster and the soul, that was all Arnold who cu- helped color. Goop mm-hmm. and I helped color, but the actual meat and bones animation, the whole nightmare sequence, like with all the demons and stuff, I think was the majority of it was animated by Arnold, like all the little creatures. Yeah. Um, uh, Hannah animated Dave mostly in that, but then if yeah. you see a shot where she's rising up out of the thing, Arnold, I, I swear to God, he would have probably, if he, we had let him, gone like animated on that like for another month. Yeah, for sure. He he is so fastidious and like focused on detail that we actually have to like. I've never had to. I've never had to fight with someone to make their art look worse, <laughs> just so that we can fit good. a deadline. You know what I yeah. mean? It's, it's not <laughs> nice. Yeah. It's not nice to shoot one of your best artists in the kneecap. Yeah. <laughs> be like, look, dude, we got to get this out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so how long though, was it? Total you, the animation from start to finish, like in the end, like oh how long god. was the? Oh um, my god, we started, we started in, like we started in July August. and we yeah. finished uh, a month ago. That's not bad. That's not yeah. bad. So that was like no. what? Like is that nine months or something? That's not bad. Pretty sure. Yeah. That's yeah. that's a yeah. That's a big. So I'm doing this considered. on your own. And uh, but specifically, what our goal was, even from the start, was when we wrote the first episode, we deliberately wrote in stuff that would be challenging because we wanted we want to develop a, a studio reel. Mm-hmm. So everything that we animate, it, not the whole thing, because that would be too expensive. But we want to have little parts that we can pull out and put in a reel. So obviously, in this one, it would be like the nightmare sequence and the the ending. You know, just so that it can look. You know, like yeah. We're, and the, like everything's the next, on fire. In the, everything's on fire. <laughs> like there's like moments where we want to. We specifically made it so that there would be like real material in it. Like in the next episode, we want to have. Uh, a, we want to show off a lot more animation techniques. So we had like yeah. we want to have a, a, a more like special effects stuff, like fire explosions. Uh, yeah, or even the, the scene. The scene of uh, could you not make a portal in the house? Like that was an incredible shot when she's going down <laughs> as he's like timidly <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cutting, cutting in that, that and but, then uh, I like your approach wanna, to the shading on that too the script like the, the next shading. the next episode we want to try and fiddle with uh blender's grease pencil to try and create a shot with like a moving camera through a environment Ooh, oh, just for nice. like just so we can you know like we we want to use each because i mean people are paying us money on patreon to yeah. make yeah. these episodes so why not use this to like improve our skills that's yeah play with different we toys mm-hmm. yeah that's awesome I know what are your you goals? Know. My goals uh, <laughs> just be faster. I'm a I'm a very slow animator. I know animation take is a slow process, but I know people who You're the do... fastest animator on our team, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and you think know. you're too slow. Oh my god. Yeah, I don't know. Just I'm very, be I'm sure very not to overwhelm I always, I, or burn out. I, oh, I'm sorry, what? I was gonna say just be sure not to overwhelm yourself or burn out. Give yourself yeah. enough time. You know, you gotta have that that balance in your life. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure I'm I'm pretty good at pacing myself and and knowing when I'll burn myself out and taking breaks. Oh, Hana is a fucking good. rock star. You do not understand <laughs> the amount of fucking shit she pumped out. Like, she, there were some weeks where she put out about like 15 seconds of polished animation. Yeah, like in a week she would put out like 15 seconds, and then she would literally be like, "Oh fuck, I have to go to school now." <laughs> That's just while doing her fucking coursework for school. Oh you know, my gosh! Like, while doing yeah. her coursework at school and working a day job. She pulled out 15 seconds of fucking polished animation. It was unreal. That's yeah. I, was, I was worried for it, dude. 
Yeah. Did no, you guys uh, end up with? Did you guys end up with any like cut animation from the episode that anybody's like gonna see later as kind of an extra Ooh, treat? Um, I don't Deleted think we scenes. cut out any Literally. scenes. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think what we... you see is what you get. Yeah, How about that's, that that's actually impressive. Scene? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I never actually the, thought about. Here's the thing, though. Mm. We were aiming. We were aiming to try and nail uh, an eleven minute, uh, an eleven minute pilot. So something that is the exact length that you would get as a pilot shown on TV, and we went two minutes over. Okay. Mm. Uh, I, think it's I remember saying to Hannah, like, "Shit, you know, like if we were, if we had like a studio gun to our head, like an executive producer, like breathing down our neck, we'd have to find two minutes to cut out of this, yeah. and yeah. we don't know where we would pull that from." Any 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 thoughts like just just for the sake of playing the little mental exercise game? What what would you cut out if you had to like just for fun? Um, I would try. I wouldn't. I don't have any scenes in mind, but I would try to trim off like any excess bits. Like just just go in like every every other second or so, every other minute. Oh, I see. Like, Tighten up. Try to find like tiny little places Hannah, to cut. Let me just. <laughs> Hannah, we're not we're not gonna cut two minutes two minutes of frames shaving. <laughs> I can try my best. Oh I, my I will, god, you will two I minutes try. of glory. There is say, out of all the guests we've had, you guys make the best segues. Because um, our podcast is like recorded for questions. well over an hour. and uh, <laughs> Oh damn, yeah. We oh, probably shit. need to trim it a bit. So We'll, we'll yeah. edit this down. Yeah, that's what sure. we're saying. So don't expect everything to make it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, but it's nice. It, yeah, I think I think if it's a I think people if it's a good podcast, people like people binge this shit like they'll play in the background and stuff. I'm really I'm really glad that Hunter and our our, our, our nervous energy managed to carry us through this. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, I think, I think we were uh, both. <laughs> you and Hans are like work the well two together, people I, I know tell. that can carry on a conversation like just beautifully like all the time. I I don't know how you guys do it. You just you just constantly just have things to talk about and, and Anna, it's really easy what you do is you think if i stop talking and stop being entertaining everyone will hate me <laughs> yeah, I, I think that already, i have no way of uh after that i just yeah kinda... but you hannah you have the talent of being an animator and all these other things that you can like rest your laurels on well we oh, yeah, have to yeah. just be interesting with our with our yeah. conversation you know <laughs> yeah. i'd like to do both uh, uh, eventually i'd like to uh, be good at talking I remember. I remember when we first contacted Hannah. We thought, like, I, I don't know, this, I'm gonna, our, our impression of you was that you were this like delicate little snowflake, <laughs> um, and oh, we yeah. had to like tiptoe around. You. We didn't even want to tell you that we found that we found out about you on 4chan. We're like, oh yeah, we just you know we saw your uh, thing on Twitter, and you were yeah. like, which one? And Arnold and I were like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Tug your um, shirt we thought you. We thought you were gonna because. Um, Hannah doesn't believe you, but I love going on Co just to see like the raw feedback that people give. Because on YouTube, everyone's like, "Oh, I love, I love this," and then it, on Co, this is shit. Like, oh my god, like I wanted to kill myself <laughs> watching this. And I think you need to see, you need for for a, for a healthy interpretation of your own work. I think you need to see both. Yeah, you need to see yeah. The, the you horrid underbelly of what possible. people think of your. Yeah, because well, assholes, assholes might be assholes, but assholes are usually honest, you know. <laughs> yeah, unfold. Yeah. 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 Have you been uh, <laughs> keeping up with the reviews you're getting on Newgrounds? We have a pretty good share of assholes. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. Yeah. I think it's a good not mix on like Newgrounds. we used to. I think that's gotten better. Yeah, definitely yeah. not like we used to for sure. But that's I good. think it's healthy. The trolls. I took and... a healthy assholes when I, was, <laughs> when I was in high school. So this was like 2007. I was absolutely obsessed with Newgrounds. Like my, I remember. I don't know if you guys know know the the animation called Decline of Gaming. Yeah. With uh, uh, yeah. uh Tom I don't and I've seen that uh, one. Yeah, the yeah. Decline of Video Gaming. That's uh, Tom and, and Adam Vian. Uh, they they actually make uh, Switch games now. Yep. Oh, do they? Well, yeah, they made a, they made the Tangle them, Tower and Snipper I want them to know that uh, Decline oh, wait, one two and a Christmas special. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. wait, the Super Flash Bros. Oh, yeah, Super oh, Flash Bros. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. shit! Okay, well, I was absolutely wow. obsessed with those those four episodes. My friend and I, we would like we drew like fan art and paint and made our own like uh, WMV fan animations and Windows. <laughs> <Make> <laughs> That's and adorable. Painted frames. Like we were obsessed in Newgrounds on like Joe Cartoon and Albino Black Sheep. And then when YouTube came around, like you know, obviously, like I I, I don't want to like expose myself as not being loyal to Newground, and I'm on the Newground <laughs> podcast. <fine. laughs> but uh, hey, it's I'm okay. really glad to be. I'm really glad that like I had such a big splash coming back to it because the like you said the reviews was, I, I let me just tell you the quality of the quality of comment on Newgrounds uh is fantastic i really loved going through them because it was actually critique in a lot of them yeah i have a theory about beats that. that in youtube community am i right 
Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> like, I'm YouTube on, isn't yeah, even yeah. a community. It's a fucking madhouse. <laughs> it is. Yeah. No, but uh, to me, the, the, the one of the key differences in web design that, like, in the design of the website that between YouTube comments and YouGuys comments is that in, in, in YouGuys you can only post one comment. You know, so. I think you'll get yeah, a lot more like, well, let me think about what I'm going to say comments. You yeah, know? you got to make it a good one. And yeah. it's meant oh, yeah. to be a review, not a comment. So it's mm. it's really asking you to critique. It's not asking you to just say, hey, yeah, good girl, show us your tits, uh, you know? And then most, most <laughs> YouTube did, comments how just... The, how did the big demon and, and the schlubby guy, how did they, how did they make a puppy? <laughs> 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 that I see on YouTube. Yeah. Um, oh, one thing, okay, Newgrounds fucking blows huge out of the water because we we there was about twenty thousand Satina episode one final Satina episode one final two Satina episode one final 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 <laughs> one <laughs> because kept, we kept finding little things that we had to fix and we would keep the final uploading final. on YouTube and then we'd have to keep changing out the video or whatever because once it goes live you can't change that video that's just the video yeah I have and there to is, keep uploading yeah. and copying and I'm pasting not pointing, I'm not going to expose ourselves here but there is an error in the current upload on YouTube that isn't <gasps> in the Newgrounds one because we're able to fix it because Newgrounds no. has this fantastic fucking feature Shady, you're breaking error, people's yeah. immersion no, 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 they won't. You could swap the video file and you can just project. swap the video file out and it doesn't remove your views or the comments or anything. Yeah. Isn't, we're that, able to isn't that wonderful? YouTube. Thanks, that is, that is the most. Tom Fulp, that was an amazing fucking idea. Thanks, I'm Tom. so glad that you did that. <laughs> Golf clap. Golf clap for Tom. Yeah. No, Tom is. is uh, Tom to me is like the, the light side of Dark Zucker, uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Like, Mark Zuckerberg is like dark the dark Zuckerberg. Dark, Zuck dark Zuckerberg. Dark Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like if Mark Zuckerberg is like the tyrant, uh, Tom is like the benevol benevolent like web web host or you know website creator. You know, like he really is like he, those kind of choices only come from like someone with a good soul. I think. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, he he's really actually he's been really supportive of my career. You have no idea how supportive and generous he is. So you're in good hands. I actually talked to Han some days ago, and I told him that I define him as the uh, masturbating uh, Mr. Rogers of the internet. Tom? <laughs> yes, he's the masturbating Mr. Rogers of the internet. He is. That's, Look, he should. I think the older he gets, he should start wearing those cardigans. You know. This this dude just uh, out of the blue offered to plaster our our fucking first cartoon we've ever made on the front page of his website and for that i'm always going to be that like i felt bad when because he was like yeah i'll put you on the banner and i was like oh god i hope the people in that like you know the the favorites box like right on the front yeah. of the website yeah, i was yeah, kind of worried that we're going to be like window. why do you yeah like why this it's like their first thing on this website why are they suddenly getting but everyone was really nice about it there was like no issues and i was that's when i realized what this community is about and i was like oh damn yeah okay. they want to see you win you win, we all win, because uh, it brings in, you know, the viewers, and it brings in the talent, and it just raises the bar for everybody. That's what we're all about. Absolutely. And you know what's great? You know what else is great? Uh, Newgrounds is also very resourceful for, like, underground music, just people you can contact to commission, voice actors. We we help each other out. Mm -hmm. It's such a great Collab community. It's, such, it's, it's, so defi great. it's definitely going to become a very important resource for us when we're developing episodes two and three in the coming year. For sure, yeah. Oh, that's that's great to hear. Yeah, very awesome grateful here. that we got connected with the community. Um, real we quick, we got plugged little... directly into it. Yeah, we did, <laughs> and now we're here. We can't escape. <laughs> Who did no. that to you guys? I'm so sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a quick kind of off-topic question, but sort of on the topic. But um, we're experiencing, especially I think this year, uh, Hans and I actually talked about this. Uh, coming back uh, to, to the evolution of the in entertainment industry, both live action and animation, um, are there any shows, and this is for like eight, all three of you that I'm asking, by the way, it, are there shows that you see that have really set the bar high that, or just any favorites that have a special place in your heart? Recently or in general? In general. Just in general. Uh, I think Hannah um, knows my answer. Uh, yeah, do you want to say it though? I want to know if you know it. <laughs> I've told you someone, enough. Every you time should say your own answers. I just I forget every. Oh, okay. Cartoon. No worries. She's forgotten. We're not that close, apparently. No, uh, it's no. fine. Anna, why don't you tell them? Anna, why don't you tell them your favorite cartoon, dude? It's fine. Tell them. I don't. No, I'm just saying. I every time someone asks me my favorite, them, I know. I know your favorite cartoon. cartoons. You don't know mine, but it's fine. I know yours, but whatever. Shaggy, what's my favorite cartoon? Tell me. Um, you like that uh, Dan versus, and you yeah. like SpongeBob. Those are your two yeah. favorite cartoons. Wow. You always tell people you have two favorite cartoons. Yeah. 
Um, I also I also really like Phineas and Ferb. I think that was like I I, I remembered that I liked it the other day. Um, even though I put a fucking <laughs> you remembered <laughs> that you liked it. I was like, oh you yeah. You put a fucking reference to it in our cartoon. But yeah, and I was like, I just remembered it. like two days ago. Like, oh yeah, that was like that. I, I watched that for years, and it had this significant influence on my art style and and sense of humor. Oh yeah, oops, awesome. That's like that's like seeing your best friend, but not seeing them for a year, and then they come back, yeah. but you forgot, and you're like, oh, wait a minute, yeah, I like you, and then you feel like a dick because you haven't kept up with them in so long, and they're like still super. Yeah, and nice you forget to you. their favorite cartoon that they told yeah. you multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least for me like uh my my personal favorites are like that inspired or influenced me is like definitely like a few of the the uh cartoon boom of the 90s stuff like powerpuff girls and dexter's lab and yeah uh, all those kind of things like I, what i yeah. think is interesting and i think the reason why we're experiencing a, a like this kind of indie cartoon boom right now is obviously we have the tools to make cartoons from home now we don't have to paint cells and have access to all these giant equipment and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, I think the reason why we're experiencing a boom is because the people who grew up as kids watching the first 90s cartoon boom now are older and can make their own cartoons. So it's almost like it's not awesome. these cartoons. Yeah, yeah. Like what it is, is it's like those kids grew up and now we're making our stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. And quarantine. Uh, well, that yeah. <laughs> it helps. Yeah. Yeah, that is one Way thing to work like, from home. That is one thing if hypothetically the quarantine were to extend indefinitely, animation wouldn't really suffer if anything it might enhance it. Will it will prosper for sure because people are stuck at home, and they don't know what to do with them. So and well and you can work here. remotely on a in an animation studio as things like Yada and Scumhouse have proven, exactly. you know? Yeah, yeah. But, you need a building. But but there's this shocking thing that you told me about the Mandalorian that's actually live action. But it was all done inside in a way that where you, you could basically have exterior locations on screens like the live. Holodeck. Yeah, <laughs> it's nuts. That's I was gonna uh, in in that hypothetical scenario where the quarantine was extended. I was arguing that Disney would have a monopoly on live action just because like they're the only ones who could afford this insane thing that basically creates any exterior you want in you know indoors. But well, well uh, Lucasfilm developed it. Yeah, yeah, they were they were working on that for years, and then Disney kind Wait, of. Wait, was like... it Lucasfilm or Industrial Lights and Magic? Well, Industrial Light and Magic, but they're under Lucasfilm. But yeah. Oh, is it? Listen, yeah, yeah. I don't follow that sort of thing. Yeah, so but that's nonsense. Ignorance. That was just more of like a hypothetical, you know? Like, I don't George think Luke the quarantine is going to last indefinitely. I'm through. actually. It's seeming like things are going to finally start opening up. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. We'll see. We'll yeah, see. we'll see. We'll see. So. Well, uh, in America, uh, it's a lot easier. Uh, the lockdown isn't as bad. There, I'm mm -hmm. not allowed to leave my house. So. Yeah, your your oh, lockdown sorry. is military enforced. Like people yeah. can't even go outside unless it's for oh, essential wow. services. Yeah, it's like that basically sucks, martial man. law, right? Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty mm -hmm. uh, hectic. Sorry, I don't want to keep derailing this with. With your suppressing <laughs> <laughs> African I, I was the one who asked. <laughs> I, I was the one who asked this, yeah. but I will say. Um, Josh, did you have any more questions? Because I have a couple of small questions. No, I've actually I got to get going in a little bit here, so let's. Uh... Oh, we'll wrap it up then. So, well, I yeah, well uh... ask your questions. I mean, I got a little bit of time, so. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I wanted to say before we get to the audience questions, um, is there any other? Are there any other tips that any of you want to give to uh, any fellow independent creatives out there? Um, keep posting on social media. Um, it's like it. Also, followers aren't everything, and, uh, <laughs> wait, sorry, I'm derailing. Um, it, internet fame is really weird, and n nobody can explain it, um, but someday it'll happen to you, and you just gotta, you just gotta roll with it. Um, but don't stop posting your stuff, uh, keep your, keep your followers updated, uh, post stuff they wanna see, and eventually, um, also, somebody will contact you, and ask you to make a cartoon. That, yeah. Yeah. In, yeah, like like I <laughs> But in regards to that, if you're posting stuff, uh, don't just post it once, like on Twitter, because it'll just disappear immediately. Like post yeah. something, and then a couple of days later, post it again. Yeah. But like, hey, in case you missed it, and you have like three or four times with everything you do, because I can guarantee if you just post it once, it's gonna zoom by, and that person mm -hmm. who might reach out to you will have missed it. Yeah. Yeah, just just harass your followers every couple of days. Just well, spam. What it. I like to do um, on Twitter is I like to keep it my art instead of just like oh i ate, I ate cereal today I, I, I went to the bathroom today you know i kind of try to keep those tweets less and and like showcase my <laughs> art. Oh, that's what i've been doing all these years Damn. don't yeah. don't retweet 
don't if you're in your social media and you're an artist don't retweet lewd stuff okay because i will follow an artist that i like and then when i'm out in public he'll have liked something or she'll have liked something that is just uh, a little above board that i don't want mm-hmm. appearing on my feet in front of my parents or at right. the dentist yes and, I agree to, and, so and, and you you continuously retweet the stuff i'm gonna have to to either turn off your retweets and then i won't be able to see the other artists you're retweeting so mm-hmm. like i'm not able to grow my follow count of like people i want to because the thing is, I use my Twitter as like a, a Rolodex of artists that I want to eventually reach out for if I ever have the, the budget or the means to work on a specific style of thing. And I think you're a good thing. Like, that's how I kind of keep tabs on artists. Yeah. And also, uh, try and be politically neutral because Jesus mm, Christ, right. that, that can turn people off immediately in either direction. Just yeah. right. your art. Your, your, your thing is there for your art. No one is going to change their political views because someone who drew a SpongeBob fan art is <laughs> On a, on a political debate i can tell yeah. you that and you know what it's not going to change anything and this is why this is why um people like artists make not safe for work accounts they called ad accounts it's called after dark mm-hmm. accounts because they can retweet like you know the lewd not you know adult stuff and yeah. you know just keep it separate but i yeah, think yeah, a lot of celebrities from your professional portfolio like just you, right when you when you go on just those accounts, warn you can them get, but warn them and say this account is for my professional stuff that accounts for uh every, yeah. anything that i like that's not exactly safe for work but i think the mistake that a lot of celebrities make in general or artists or anybody is posting about their political views uh like shaggy mm-hmm. said and, and it sort of kind of botches some of their opportunities because there might be people out there who wanted to hire you and they're like oh um oh i like donald trump uh, and he doesn't like donald trump i'm not gonna hire him because he insulted yeah. him or whatever and exactly. and so you might you might miss out and and so mm-hmm. and, and a lot of people don't realize just because you have different political views doesn't mean you shouldn't work with each other but in because general you'll actually probably get along more than you thought you know uh, what's what's funny is that yeah. i just I'm not, not out anyone but the political compass at scum house is varied and interesting and mm-hmm. we all get along because we yeah. deliberately choose to not step on each other's toes Mm-hmm. And it's not Let's even like if I see that. You, yes. Yeah, or, um, even if I see stuff that I agree with completely, the fact that you're vocal about it is a turn off because I don't want you. It's not about that. What we make isn't about. So Tina is right. the most politically vapid thing you'll ever see. And we hope that all our content is like that. It's just fun entertainment. So mm-hmm. Tina was actually a giant 13 minute long Elizabeth Called the wall metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason she's red. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Exactly. oh man, that's hilarious. Red's, okay, so red's out. <laughs> on that note, so, I wanted to ask one more thing uh, before we get to the audience questions. Is there any like merc or pages you want to plug? Oh yeah, sure. Um, buy our merch at Shark Robot, SharkRobot.com slash Satina Store, I think. Um, and also, what else? What else do we? Man, have? we should have had this ready to go before. One thing. Uh, yeah, Sadina dash Sadina dash store. If you just yeah, type, if you just go to Google store. and type in shock robot Satina, it'll take you right to that page. Yeah. Also, uh, patreoncom slash Satina uh, if you want to donate to our Patreon. If you give us cool. one crisp American dollar on our Patreon, okay, you can come Patreon. join our Discord. Patreon.com slash Satina. That is a very mediocre Discord, but I promise I'm working on making it more interesting. But you can <laughs> chat to other fans, get updates, and we uh, post all of the, the doodles that Hannah does about things and there's periodic updates and teasers, and that's where if you want to keep up to date, just mm-hmm. either check Hannah's Twitter or the Scumhouse Twitter, or if you want real updates, one crisp American dollar. One dollar, on that's all it takes. On our Patreon. I'm joining Patreon. that Discord server. I do have a one small suggestion because you guys, you need more money. I really think you need more money. And I think the <laughs> easiest way to do that, you need to add Dave's Why Work When You Can Drink at 3 a.m. shirt to your store. I wanted to do that. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I would buy that. That's a good idea. That's yeah, one our, more our thing. Our guy made us start with uh, just two designs, but I have a bunch of them lined up. And one yeah, of them I is just... the shirt. And one the other one is the mug that uh, Satina gets for Dave, the, the one that says a dad. That's, that's a dad's great. Yeah. If you <laughs> yes. want to keep people... I'll... I'll model for those pictures in the store if you want. I'll wear oh the shirt God, and hold yeah. them up. Honest, yeah, yeah. honest to God, people think we are lying when we say this, but we have the full intention <laughs> of releasing a Lucia body pillow. Yes, it I have it made. Asked for, it has been asked for. We have already spoken to Shock Robot about potentially making this. They are interested. We just need to get interest in our other merch before they want to take that, that risk on printing these fucking things out yeah but what about one last mega merch idea 
I honestly yeah. would personally love to have one myself, but like a little Satina plushie would just be incredible. That's right? what I was just saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So you got yeah, your shirt. Are the next step you got the mug. Right? You got the the body pillow, and then the plushie, and then you're yeah. you're, you're you are <laughs> set as being a member of the Satina family. Like, <laughs> um, we we feel very we're not very good at either promoting ourselves, running social media, or uh, even running our Discord. Oh, listen, if anyone is a Discord mod. Who is like a decent Discord mod, or like a, or like handles Reddit and all that shit, and is like good at promoting, like you know, updating shit on social media. Like one person, I would really appreciate if you could reach out to me at scumhouse at gmail dot com with like your your shit, saying like this is what I do or whatever, because we are garbage at keeping up to date with this stuff. We don't update our Patreon enough or our Twitter. People don't know what's going on. There's radio silence. If we can get someone who's good at helping with that sort of thing, we would really appreciate it. And we'll yeah. try and make it worth your while. Awesome. Yeah. If you don't mind me, like, if you that was a if that was a plug that wasn't okay with you guys, feel free to cut that out. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's actually something we do need. Uh, no, no, we'll leave it in. We'll leave it yeah, in. We'll yeah. hook you up. Awesome. Thanks for this listening. Is whoever has to edit this. New Grounds podcast. <laughs> Bye. Whoever, has to, edit, whoever Bye. has to edit this is gonna have a lot of work to do. Yeah. I'm so it. sorry. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe no, the conversation was so it, like, smooth that like, we're not being any editing needed. Right. Yeah, we just scared as is, it's fine. Can we stop recording now? Thank you for listening to the New Grounds Podcast. This show is recorded live on our Discord server. Join us at bit.ly slash NGP Discord. For the latest news, follow us on Twitter at the NG Podcast. Thank you to Waterflame for the use of his song Gabberfly. Long live new grounds.